so this next section of my box, it's it's a big section, I'm sorry about it. This is where the, the non-sensors, so the outputs and the passives that I have. So, show you got, I got a lot of kind of larger bags, kind of parted out into different sections. So, I have connectors, really non-electrical components. So, I'll go over that. I have my outputs, so I have LEDs and, you know, what have you. Um, transistors, so normally I actually keep my LEDs in the same little bag as the transistors, just because, you know, most commonly I'm going to be using LEDs, transistors, and resistors, so I kind of, I tend to cross-contaminate a little bit. And then I got my other two bags here, and I got resistors, and I'll go through which ones I find most useful. I obviously just have a couple little baggies here with them. I don't like to keep a lot around, just sort of, you know, resistors, they are what they are. Most of the time you don't need to be precise, but sometimes, you, you know, you need what you need. I'm not going to keep any more than what I need. And then I got some caps, capacitors. I'll go over which ones of those I ha keep on hand as well. Starting with my just uh, passive sort of uh, connectors and what have you. I have, I, I keep one nice little heat sink. I, I always forget, was it TO-22 or the people, somebody will correct me. But this is just, uh, you know, a standard little, little heat sink with the little connector bits for you. I like to keep that around because, you know, things get hot. So might as well have one on hand. Um, got a little baggie of, got a little baggie of jumpers, just a couple there, you know, you, they, they come in handy, so keep those around. Then I got here, I got some, some battery connectors, these are, uh, I forget what they're exactly called, but they're the most common connector for, uh, RC, uh, vehicles for power connection, so I like to keep some of those around because honestly, you buy them on eBay for pennies. And, you know, I like to just keep them stocked. I, I keep a good 20 or 30 pairs of them stocked at all times. Really useful, really nice. I used to use 9-volt battery snaps, and they're great, they work, but, you know, when you're a dumbass and you forget that, you know, you gotta, you wired up the, the positive and negative backwards on the, on the power supply ends, so that when you wired up the correct way on the device end, and then, yeah, it gets, you, you screw yourself over. So I, I've tended to, to move to these. They're really nice um, and honestly cheaper. So they're wonderful. I do keep on hand two of these little JST three pin connectors here. They're really wonderful. Honestly, I don't keep the, the these are the, the female end, not the pin end, the, the female end because you know, I can just use regular header pins if, you know, in a pinch, I, I need to use these. I'll use the male side, I'll use header pins. And, you know, they don't fit amazingly into those pins, pin sockets, but they work well enough. And like I said, this is not my, my workbench. This is my on-the-go box. So not everything's going to be, you know, up to spec. But it all works. And lastly... I love to keep myself stocked with USB, both fe uh, male and female socket uh, and connector. These, again, bought on eBay. You can buy them real cheap. I like to keep these around just half my projects. They're, you know, 5 volt or 3.3, and, you know, you get the little iPhone bricks or the, you know, little charger bricks. You got USB ports all over these days. So, Half my projects are powered off of USB, so I might as well keep, you know, USB parts around. Very, very useful. Also, incredibly useful in this box, because when you're on the go, probably your only real power supply is USB. So, again, keeping these around. So, that's it for the kind of the passive components there. Or not passives, but connector components. Fix this damn camera. There we go. So... Now we got my my output. So in a previous video, we went over sort of my 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 inputs, my my sensors. I tend to keep a lot, a much broader range of sensors around than I do outputs, and this is because, you know, in the field when you're working on something, it is useful to actually have at least a pretty close facsimile to the output that you or to the input that you plan on using in the future. Then it really is to 
have the output that you're going to use. So half the time, you know, you realize you want to come up with a temperature sensor and you want it to, you know, turn on a fan, but you don't have the fan, but you want it to turn on a fan at some point in the future when you get above a certain temperature. Well, you know, I'm not going to keep a fan in my box, but I will keep some LEDs. You know, an LED really in the, real, in the testing world is just as good as saying I've turned on a fan, especially when working with microcontrollers. You flip the pin on, you see the light turn on. Well, you, you know, you hook that up either to a relay or to a you know, MOSFET if it's a DC fan. And there you go. You know that in the, when you actually go sit down at your workbench that your code is probably going, going to work. So this will work too. And so I keep a good, good supply of LEDs around. Earlier this year I went and I bought probably a good three or four thousand LEDs on eBay, just all assorted colors. I love to keep these around. So I got a nice, good, thick bag supply of them here, probably about 20 or 30, Meh, maybe 20. That being said, sometimes you do actually want to test something with a motor. This isn't really going to be a very good motor to do much with, but sometimes you want to see, you know, if your load, you know, your, your, whatever, your transistor that you're wiring up in your, on the field is going to work out for you. So, you know, keep a motor around just in case, you know, I probably should put some little, you know, solid core or, well, no, solid core isn't the best idea, but if I'm going to be breadboarding, and it's a prototyping thing, I'll just put some solid core wire on that. Probably should do that before I put this back in the box, just to make life easier to hook things up. And then the last thing that I, I haven't actually had a use for yet, but I do like to keep in here, are uh, a couple pairs of infrared uh, LEDs and transistors. So these are great for, you know, uh, well, your garage door sensor is effectively using that. It's using an infrared laser, or maybe even a red laser, and one of these little infrared transistors to detect, you know, when, when you've put your foot in the way and you're about to get crushed by the garage door. So these are really lovely to keep around. Again, I haven't had a use for them yet, but I can definitely see myself using them at some point. You can also, in a lot of cases, use the infrared transistors for... Uh, detecting, you know, detecting just ambient light. Now, it's not going to work amazingly if you're using all LED lights in your house and, and what have you, but sunlight, that puts off an incredible amount of infrared radiation, so these will detect it quite well. And on the flip side, the infrared LEDs, I keep those around, you know, also not only because the, you know, the infrared transistor LED pair, but also because, well, you know, sometimes you want to actually have an infrared light. Sometimes you're, you are, you're making a, a controller for a TV and you need to, you know, have a little infrared transmitter there. So those are lovely. So those are, you know, I only have three outputs. I don't have a lot of outputs. It's not really necessary, especially in the field. Most of the time you're just trying to light up a light anyway. So that works. Well, it looks like we're getting to the end of the video here. Next video, we're going to go over my transistors, what, what, what I keep those, you know, the, the transistors and what have you that I keep on hand, as well as the resistors and capacitor values that I like to keep on hand. Those are really useful. I'll tell you which ones I use, which ones, you know, I don't really care about. Um, so yeah, see you next time.